This is November 23, paper 4, 1, question number 2. Question number 2. Bacteria can be grown on agar jelly in a petri dish. When they grow and multiply, the clear agar jelly becomes cloudy. Because of the growth of the bacteria, the agar becomes uh, cloudy. Antibiotics, antibiotics can prevent the growth of bacteria. Discs of filter paper dipped in an antibiotic solution can be placed on the surface of the agar. If the area around a disc remains clear, the antibiotic has prevented the growth of the bacteria. The larger the clear area, the more effective the antibiotic is. A student in vector investigated the effect of distal water E and four different antibiotics, F, G, H, and J, on some bacteria using the method described. They set up three identical petri dishes and measured the diameter of the clear areas around the filter paper discs after a few days. There was no clear area around disc E in any of the petri dish. Figure 2.1 shows the results for Petri dish 3. Now you realize these are all bacteria growing here. And when you place this antibiotic, then the, the antibiotic, from this, this disc of antibiotic, the antibiotic diff diffuses out and kills all the bacteria. So you get a clear area around it. So the larger the clear area, the more effective that antibiotic is. Now you see what has happened. Now, E, nothing has happened. Why? Because E was distal water. Distal water does not contain any chemical which is going to kill the bacteria. But F had a very smaller area. G has a bigger area. Uh, H has the biggest area. And J has a very small, minimal area. Now, this cloudy area is where the, uh, where the bacteria are growing. And the clear area where, means that the bacteria has been killed because of the antibiotic which has diffused out of this filter paper which they have placed and they have the filter paper has been soaked in an antibiotic and they're different antibiotics most of the measurements for the clear areas around the disc with antibiotics f j h j are shown in table 2.1 a1 measure the diameter of the clear area around the disc with antibiotic h in figure 2.1 and record this in the table so you had to measure this area and you had to record this in the table. And this was Petri dish 3H. This is 22 millimeter. It was anything between 20 and 22 millimeter was allowed. So you had to record this in the table. So you recorded this in the table 22. But then it says the next part of the question says calculate the mean diameter of the clear area. With anti enter the value in the table rounded to one decimal place and space for working. Now, what are these two marks for? If you use 20, then it would have been 20.7. But if I used uh, 22, then it's uh, 21.0. Because you must use the same decimal places. But here it says calculate the mean diameter with this enter by value in the table rounded to a space for working. So millimeter on the answer line and value entered in correct table cell. So here you would have to say 20.7 millimeter. But you would enter it there. So if you wrote 20.7 because the answer you could have said 20.7 because if you had taken 20 as the mean. So when you calculated the mean diameter is your space for working. So you could have come with 20.7. It depends what you measure is 20, 21 or 22. All three were allowed. So 20.7. But then if you wrote it here, then you wrote 20.7 millimeter. You had to write the millimeter here. But then you also had to write this in the table here. So if you said 22, then you got a mean of 21.0. But if you had said something different, then it would have been a 20 point. So whatever you got, 20, 21, or 22, then you wrote that here. I have done it according to the one which I got. Then it says B1, construct a bar chart of the four mean diameters in table 2.1 on the grid. And this is for four marks. And state which antibiotic was the most effective at preventing growth of the bacteria that was H because it had the largest. You see, what you have to understand is it had the largest clear space. So H was the most effective antibiotic. Now, as you can see, these were the values. F was 
G was 14.3, that's a little difficult. H was 21.0 and J was 8.0. So then you plotted these, but then you see these were not what you, you should have plotted. What do you write on the Y axis? The label of the axis must be very important because you see there are four marks. What are the marks for? Axis and bars fully labeled. So linear scale for diameter and value at origin at least half of the grid used in both directions. Mean values plotted correctly. All bars ruled and of equal width plus bars not touching. You see a bar chart is not touching. In a histogram they are touching. So this is what you had to really be doing. That areas and bars, uh, sorry, axis and bars fully labeled. We haven't labeled the axis. I'll just label it. Linear scale for the diameter and value at origin. So you should have written here, zero here, you should have written zero and five, and then you should have uh, numbered it every two centimeter. At least half of the grid used, mean values plotted correctly, all bars ruled and of equal width and bars not touching. So labeling the axis is very important. So the antibiotics were, you could have labeled that here, antibiotics. And mean in millimeters, you should have been on the y-axis. And state which antibiotic is most affected, you just have to write H. Then it says the student realized that one of their results was anomalous. State which measurements was an anomalous result and suggest what the student could have done about it. And that's for two marks. You see, when they say anomalous, what does it mean? It means that which does not fit the trend which does not go with the trend. So now if you look at this in Petri dish 2, this is 12 and this is 12. And then in this it is 6. So this is an anomalous result. Anomalous means it doesn't go with the trend. Petri dish 2 and antibiotic F, which had a 6 millimeter measurement. Now how, what are you going to do about it? You either you exclude it from the mean or you repeat the experiment. If you're taking out the mean, then you don't add this anomalous. You say you'll just then do 12 plus 12 divided by 2. Either you exclude it from the mean, remove it from the mean, then you calculate the mean without it. Or you repeat the experiment and do this again and find the new reading for it. So Petri dish 2, uh, an antibiotic F, as I've just explained it to you why, because it had a 6 millimeter and the rest of the readings were 12 and 12. And you exclude it from the mean or you can say repeat the experiment. Now coming to question number 3, figure 3.1 is a photomicrograph of a section through a kidney showing some kidney tubules. You can see there's a collecting duct and they've shown you the bracket of it and then they've shown you a loop of Henle. Right, it's figure 3.1 K and L. This is K and L, so this is K. Please look at it very carefully. K and L indicate the diameter of a collecting duct. Draw a straight line to join K and L on the collecting duct in the photomicrograph. Measure the length of the line and record it. Okay, is everybody clear on that? So we had to do is join it, K and L. So here you join this. You draw a good mark for that. Draw a straight line to join K and L. On the collecting duct in the photomicrograph, measure the length of the line and record it. So it was about 27 millimeter. Always write in millimeter. Measure the length of the line and record it. The actual distance between K and L is 0 0.06 millimeter. The actual is 0 0.6, but this is 27 millimeter. So you calculate the magnification. How do you do that? So 27 divided by 0 0.06. And it says calculate the magnification and record it to the nearest whole number. That's where you're going to make a mistake. Record it to the nearest whole number. So how are you supposed to do it? You measure the length, draw a line. The length was nearly 27. They said anything between 27 and 29 was correct. You have to write the units in millimeter. Then the actual distance 0 0.06. So the 27 divided by 0 0.6 is 450 times. And it has to be a whole number, but this is coming out as a whole number. 
Then it says in the space below, make a large drawing of the collecting dump and loop of Henle that are labeled in figure 3.1. Draw them as they appear in the photo micrograph. Fine. Well, we'll do a drawing for that. Okay, now coming into the next part, I want to finish this and then do the drawing for you. Uh, a person from suffering from type 1 diabetes produces urine containing glucose. Describe a test that could be carried out to detect whether glucose is present in a sample of urine. Description of the test is uh, you add Benedict solution and you heat it. Benedict solution <clears throat> and you heat. In a boiling water bath. And if the color changes to red from blue, the color changes to red then that's a positive result. The color could be green or yellow or orange or red. All of that means glucose is present. So you got the two marks by saying Benedict solution and heat. And the second mark was change the color from blue to red or you could have said any color, blue or red or you could have said blue to red, you could have said blue to green, you could have said blue to orange. And that means glucose is present. Now I'm just drawing it in front of it so that it becomes easier for me to draw it. Now basically the proportions must be correct. Now look at the number of cells. This is one. Nucleus two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now you have to be very careful when you're drawing it because you see they expect you to do draw exactly what you can see. So this is what you had to understand is that you had to be drawing. So a diagram like this would be fine. Please remember there's no shading. You don't have to shade it. You just have to draw it simply what you can see. Now if this was of course the collecting duct then let's look at the loop of Henle. I've drawn them of course. Uh, <clears throat> just looking at the picture, but you have to draw them close to each other. Because actually what you're seeing is you're seeing this very close to their sort of touching each other. So you have to draw it exactly like this. Of course, I've drawn it separately because I'm looking at the diagram and drawing it. So you are supposed to draw them together. Like for instance, if you're drawing them here, then this would be one thing and then this would be the next one drawn next to it. But of course, this should be bigger. Why? Because it should be bigger because it should occupy nearly two-thirds of the space provided to you. Now, this is the space provided to you. This was the space, exact space provided to you was from here to here. So then one would have to be a little bigger. And then there was the one which was going to be a little smaller. And then you would do the same thing like I have done on that side because I have been just doing it against the diagram. So what you can see is that this was the one that you were supposed to be drawing and then you were supposed to be drawing this one next to it. So you had to be sure that you get it all correct. This was something like this here and this had this and then you had to draw. So it says how are you going to get these five marks? The five marks are the one which you're supposed to get. Sharp pencil, continuous outer lines, no shading. You got one mark. Only collecting duct and loop of Henle drawn. You got another mark. This is collecting duct and this is this is collecting duct and this is the loop of Henle. So you drew that. You got two marks. Next. Correct orientation. You could see them. They were correctly oriented. Shape of both oval taller than wide and loop of Henle. Then smaller than the collecting duct plus size of the drawing. Two nuclei in the loop of Henle. There were two nuclei here. And one was, there was one here. And there was one here. So two nuclei in the loop of Henle. And 11 in the loop of, so there were 11 here. As I showed you here in this one, there were 11 here. 11, I'd say, slash 12 nuclei in the collecting duct. So this is how you had to, you had to show this in this. So this was five marks. Everybody says we're very bad at drawing. 
I tell you, it's not a question of being bad at drawing. It's just drawing what you see. You could be worse at drawing, but you should be able to draw it. You should just be able to correctly draw what you see. So that completes this paper. And uh, thank you very much for watching and for subscribing. And best of luck.